engineering. Total failure. That's right, my innovative substrate engineering method has completely, totally, embarrassingly failed. And that's what failure looks like. The entire glue bond has come apart on the top surface and it's puffed up and so bad that it's spilling drinks. Not cool. So what's really not cool is it's not just one top, not just two tops, but eight out of nine of my experimental substrate method failed completely. So I have a method for repairing these, which I'm going to demonstrate, but I just wanted to show what failure looks like in the wood shop. These are repaired. I have a glue injection method. So I'm boring holes underneath, injecting glue, and then filling up the empty space here. So this one doesn't have any puff in it. It's not perfectly flat. There's some ridges in it, but they're pretty much filled with glue. And on this one, I made some saw curves and added some wedges. It was a little bit more severe. And that's to try to add some more tension to the substrate to uh, help with that a little bit. I don't know if that works or not, but it's just something I tried to you know, get it to not be as unstable. Um, but yeah, this has been a grueling, physically labor-intensive repair process. But I'm going to demonstrate how I do that. Drilling holes on the bottom. I have these spacers. These are plastic washers here. But I have it spaced out so it just penetrates to make a hole through these two layers. But the risk of drilling through the metal is relatively low so I can gauge it pretty well with these spacers and uh, but I have to do it upside down so that's a little bit awkward. So why did this happen? Well it's going into an extreme dry environment. I have a heated space but it's not anywhere close to a big commercial building with a big boiler and some buildings like that can really be the extreme end of dry conditions. So basically the substrate changed dimension and shrank drastically due to changes in moisture content in the environment while the metal did not change dimension. The only reason why zinc would change dimension is due to thermal expansion. If, if something hot is placed on the countertop or if it's left in the sun it will expand and that will put stress on the glue joint. So in this case, unfortunately, the ill-conceived and inappropriate use of plywood caused the substrate to shrink, and that caused the total glue failure of these zinc tabletops. Another contributing factor is that I used a thinner, springier type of zinc, which was a cheaper alternative, but Definitely not as good as the thicker, softer material. And that adds more tension to have the thinner, springier metal. So probably not going to use that in the future. I'm going to go back to Advantech, uh, but I'm going to talk about that in a, in a different video. There's going to be some new methods here in the wood shop. Another reason why these failed so bad is my choice of glue. It really isn't a flexible type of glue. It's the polyurethane, which is better than your standard subfloor glue. But this is a, a different kind of glue that the company rotometals.com, they sell and recommend that glue. This is their zinc and this is what they recommend. So this glue is a polyurethane glue with an elastomeric component to it. That engineering wise, it makes sense to have that extra flexibility, but it's more expensive glue and requires more dry time. Um, but I'll be experimenting with that.
this was just a perfect storm of shortcuts and uh, experiments <laughs> that really just didn't work. So that's what happened. So now we get to fix them.
So these last two are ready to come out of the press. So these are the zinc tops after the glue press and they turned out pretty good. This one is all good, no detectable airspace. So that glued up pretty good. And this one has one glue spot that needs to be touched up. This was the really bad one. And there's an airspace, I think right here, just a small one. So I think I'll just do one more to fill up that space. Check out this glue roller that I made recently. I'm going to use it in this application to roll out the glue a little bit to spread it out. So if your engineering fails, this is how you fix it, but obviously it's more cost effective to get it right the first time. The last repair job I did was successful. I'm feeling pretty good about it. I was able to get glue into that last airspace. And there's actually a little airspace over here. And I was able to use my glue pressure roller to squeegee some of that glue and move it around. So I don't use this pressure roller a lot only for doing repair work, but if you do any work with contact cement or veneer, it's necessary to have something to get the air bubbles out. So this works really good. I think I'll do a video for it just because it was such a fun little project and it's going to work better than anything you can get on the market, which is a lot smaller with a rubber roller. It just looks like a paint roller basically. But uh, yeah, so these zinc tops are repaired. Nice day out today.